now we're going to put all the elements together and look at the driven series RLC circuit. And what we mean by that is simply we have an oscillating um, drive. It goes to a resistor and a capacitor and an inductor all in series. Okay, we're going to apply that delta V is going to be our standard delta V max, our amplitude of oscillation, sine omega t. And we're really just going to quote the result. From here, it's pretty complicated and a little bit beyond freshman physics. What we would do is set up our all of our, the sum of all our potentials and get a differential equation similar to when we solved the RLC circuit without the drive, when we just saw that damped oscillation. It'd be similar to that, except instead of being equal to zero, it would be equal to the drive potential. So there's ways to solve that in differential equations. Uh, we aren't going to do it now. I'm just going to tell you the result. But it, I think this will help you. We'll, we'll understand the result. And you'll see it three times in your life if you keep studying physics and math. You'll see it when you study a um, driven damped harmonic oscillator, the exact same equations. You get that differential equation, you have to solve it. And you'll see it when you study these in more detail someday, RLC circuits. And if you take differential equations, the same differential equation uh, in class will show up in the two physics topics. So you'll see it, I promise. Right now, let me just tell you that this will lead to a current, an oscillating current, I, I max um, sine omega t, and it's going to be some phase lag, minus phi. Okay? So if you drive it at omega, it will eventually oscillate at omega. That's part of the process of finding the answer. And there will be, a, you know, we talked about in each one of the elements, it's in phase or it leads or it lags the current and the voltage. Um, here, you're going to end up with a phase difference of some amount. It won't necessarily be zero plus or minus pi over two. It'll just be some amount. And since they're in series, all elements have the same current at some point in time. If you go make other more complicated RLC circuits where you put maybe two of them in parallel next to one in series, then that changes the answer. Here we're just doing it for when they all have the same same current. So the big question is, what is this and what is that? So the maximum current you get will indeed depend on the value of R, C, and L and on omega. And let's see, I max will be proportional to delta V max, as you would expect. If we were just across a resistor, it would just be the resistance in the bottom. If it were across one of these individually, it was just the two reactances. So really, when they're all three there, it's a combination of those three. It's uh, the square root of R squared plus XL, the um, inductive reactance, minus the capacitive reactance squared. And this all together is called the impedance of the circuit. The impedance is kind of like the generalized AC resistance that you would just think about in a normal DC circuit. circuit. So that's how you combine uh, the, three, the three elements, or that's how you combine their resistances and um, reactances. The phase lag that you get also depends on those three things. It's the inverse tangent of, no, let me get it wrong. Uh, yes, XL minus XC, yes. This minus this over R. Again, if we went through, guessed the differential equation solution, solved it, plugged in the constants, et cetera, et cetera, you end up getting something like this. And this shows you, since it's an inverse um, tangent, basically it's only got unique values from plus pi over 2 through 0 to minus pi over 2. So that's where your phase is always in there somewhere.